Hey Bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going through my top 10 series part one. This is not the first five and then I do the other five. I'm not that cruel. This is the top 10 non-fantasy series that are on my list and then coming next would be the top 10 fantasy series on my list. I mostly read fantasy so my list is always completely inundated with fantasy. So I like doing a separate list so that I can talk about other genres because they wouldn't really get necessarily as much of a look in if it weren't for me doing a separate list because obviously they are few and far between compared to fantasy sheerly because of the amount of volume that I read. I like to do the lists separately. This list consists of sci-fi, historical fiction and dystopia. So they are the other genres that I read the most. They're just ones that wouldn't normally get a chance on a list. So I thought I would put that out there. I do actually have an honourable mention for this list. I don't for the fantasy list because it is my genre, but I do have an honourable mention for this list. And that is The Losers by Harley LaRue. I don't normally read romance, especially reading an entire romance series and it is erotic romance this one as well so again not necessarily well within my comfort zone and it is not one that surpasses any of these but for its own genre given that I don't normally read it it did stand out to me so I did want to mention it but it's still a genre that is not really necessarily 100% my thing so I had a good time reading it and it was a lot of fun but when you see the other options I have on my list you'll understand why it didn't make it further onto my list but coming in at number 10 we're going to start out with a historical fiction and that is the Cicero or Cicero series by Robert Harris this is a trilogy that centers around the last Life of Roman senator and political figure Cicero and this is a highly political series in the sense that the atmosphere is incredibly well crafted. It all feels very authentic. It is told from the perspective of the slave or and or servant of Cicero. So you get it with a slight amount of opinion and hindsight. And I just think that it's a really, really well crafted series. And it's definitely one that I think expresses the aspects of Rome that I am interested in. A lot of Roman Empire ones tend to be more about the conquests or the battles or the wars. And then the politicking is around that. This is more about the the conniving element of the Senate, which I found very interesting and exciting. Coming in at number nine, I have a sci-fi dystopia, which is the Aestus duology by S.Z. Atwell. This is a duology that I believe is part of like a larger series of series that the author is planning on writing. I did receive the first one as an arc back in 2021, I think it was, and I really enjoyed the series. We have completely messed up the planet, obviously, and now the surface of the planet is basically too hot to live on. So we have created underground settlements to live in and we are following this woman who is living in one of these settlements and gets roped in after certain creatures that live in the underground are in pursuit of her and her people so that they can get to their resources. It spans so much further than that but it's such a hard series to talk about because to even talk about the themes would kind of be a spoiler. It's just one that I, I need you to go on trust. It's a really good series. I really enjoyed the the way that this series handles its themes that I can't talk about. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, I have The Earth Seed Duology by Octavia E. Butler. This is a dystopian Afrofuturistic series that features a our world, and again, it has gone to shit. And this time we have now divided ourselves into smaller groups of people. And we are following this woman who has the ability to feel other people's pain. She is in this harrowing and horrific world. And then throughout her life, she begins to write a book which becomes known as the Book of Earthseed. It becomes almost like a Bible and it creates a whole new religion around her. And it discusses ethics, society, society, it discusses religion and religious figures and deifying people and also it discusses the things that we do to our planet. So it was a fantastic series, it is written in the 90s, so it's a classic dystopian as well and it does a really good job of still holding up today and still being worthy of using it as a point of discussion around our current society. 
Coming in at number seven, I have the Beloved series by Toni Morrison. I do have Beloved, but it's with my mum at the moment. But this is Paradise, which is book two. This is a series of essentially standalone and more like companion novels, and they are all centered around the lives of black women. The first book, Beloved, is following a woman who used to be a slave, but then she got freed during the American Civil War and is now coming to terms with that and learning how to live as a free woman. But she's also haunted by the ghost of her dead daughter, also known as Beloved. Then the second book, which is Paradise, is following a commune of ex-slaves. They now live in a way that they do not want to interact with white people or the white community and therefore they live completely in isolation. So when some nuns come to reside in one of the abandoned houses that is near their commune and they begin to interact with them it's kind of how that unfolds. And then the last book which is Jazz is about a woman whose husband has been unfaithful and it's about her interactions with him and the mistress and her just dealing with life. And I love Toni Morrison's writing. Toni Morrison is an incredible author. And even though these books don't necessarily feel like a series, it is still very much, there are the common threads that bind them together that still make you very excited to pick up another book in the series. Coming in at number six, I have Airtown by Frederick Backman. This is one that I knew I would like it, but I did not expect how much I would love it because it's contemporary. It's a contemporary story and it's a sports story. So I did not think it would be my thing, but it's not. It's not a sports story. It is around this town called Beartown. And Beartown is out in the middle of nowhere and it used to be an interesting place, but it hasn't been for a long time. More and more people leave every year. Unemployment is higher and higher every year. And now we are at the point where Beartown is on the brink of collapse, except that we have a new star hockey player. He's the up and coming best thing that hockey has seen in a while. And he's from Beartown and he plays for the Beartown team. So of course, when he gets embroiled in a controversy, it divides the town into the people who want him to succeed because he will help the town and the people who believe that he should face justice. It's a story about people. It's a story about this town, about how people come together and how they overcome what they have to overcome. It's a character centric story. So much happens in this tiny town but it's such a compelling read and the characters all feel incredibly well developed. They feel very realistic. And I just, I really loved the way that Frederick Bachman created discussions without telling you what to think or feel. Coming in at number five, we have the Texacalan duology by Arcady Martin. This is a space opera sci-fi, but not in the traditional sense. This is one that centers around the politics, in this case, intergalactic politics. And we are following a woman who is from a planet that is not part of this empire, but the empire very much would want them to be. And she is sent as a diplomat to the capital. And while she is there, she actually has a piece of technology that is, I believe, forbidden. And she uses it to connect with the memories of her predecessor, who also, it turns out, was possibly murdered. So now she needs to look into not only what is going on politically, but also potentially who murdered her predecessor and is she their next target. This series centers an awful lot on language and communication and the way that people, especially within diplomacy, will talk to each other. The way that through their mannerisms and their facial expressions, you could potentially learn more than through the words they are saying. It's so much about navigating a world that is not set up for you to understand, for, for it to be clear, for it to be easy to see someone's intentions. And I just think it was an absolutely incredible first book. Then the second book also uses communication when it comes to communicating with, in this case, other the species and how lack of language can sometimes can create hostility when it need not be. 
So I really, really appreciated the way that this series discusses things like translation, it discusses things like communication in a way that I've not seen before. Coming in at number four, I have the Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers. This one is another space opera. This one is a series of companion novels. In the first one, we are following the crew of the Wayfarer, whose job is to create wormholes so that people can like fast travel through space. And they recruit this young woman who has a lot to hide from her past and wants to start afresh on board this ship and it's not really a plot centric series at all it's about characters each new installment in the series follows a character who was potentially a secondary or even tertiary character in the previous book we are following some very interesting characters we have a lot of interesting conversations and discussions around society it's one of those series that very much removes us from our planet and incorporates an entire intergalactic ecosystem and then shows us a how small we are but also allows us to reflect on our behaviors as human beings and I just think that it's a really wholesome way of doing it it it's a very comfy and cozy series there aren't really incredibly high stakes you're not going to feel anxious but at the same time it is going to allow you to contemplate humanity essentially and, and I, I really love that about this series. This one is one of the ones that is on my cozy fantasy recommendations video which I will leave linked and if you want more of my thoughts on other cozy fantasies then you might want to go check that out. Coming in at number three I have the new slash series by Myra Grant. Now this one is a, another dystopia but this one is a very sci-fi dystopia and I say that because there is a lot of emphasis on the pseudoscience. Myra Grant is one of my favourite authors and that is because everything I have read by her, I have loved. I don't think I've rated anything of hers less than four stars. And this series is a zombie apocalypse series, but not in the way that we are accustomed to. This one follows a young woman and a young man who are bloggers. And we are 26 years after the initial zombie outbreak. And the zombie outbreak was covered up by a lot of mainstream media, which meant that bloggers and just people on the internet were the ones that were providing people with life-saving information. Therefore, the mainstream media is trusted less. We have a presidential candidate now, 26 years later, who has decided to incorporate these bloggers into part of his press for his presidential campaign, which is very innovative. And it means that then he will hopefully garner a following of people who will actually trust his candidacy. And we are following this as there are still threats to society through this virus that caused the zombie outbreak. And it's such an incredibly well-crafted series because a the way that society has formed around this pandemic is eerily realistic as I read this I think in 2020. And then also we have a very interesting discussion surrounding the importance of media representation. All of that on a backdrop of if a zombie outbreak were to happen this seems like a pretty realistic way it would happen. I really appreciated just the way that this series delved into so many different things with realistic science, interesting social commentary and social constructs, or with some very compelling characters and a very fun plot. Coming in at number two, I have the Galactic Miller series by Julian May. This series is a quartet and a trilogy and a novel that connects the two. And this one is a world in which we have people now who have these kind of telepathic abilities and we are being observed by the Galactic Miller which is like a collective of galactic societies. Once a species gets evolved enough, they are introduced to the other alien species that are out there and brought into the galactic villa. So Earth is on the brink of this, so it is being observed, and it's on the brink of this due to the fact that you have these people with these telekinetic abilities beginning to emerge as the next part of human evolution. The Many Coloured Land and the saga of the Pliocene Exiles Quartet was the one that I first read and this series is surrounding a group of people who now we are far into the future and we are part of the Galactic Milu. One of the punishments that happens in this galaxy for not adhering to the law is that you get sent back to Pliocene Earth which is the era of Earth where we first started to emerge. We have this very interesting series of events that happen throughout all of these series that interconnect in such a really 
intricate way. I loved the characters and the setup. I really, I don't like time travel, but the way this is set up, it worked really well for me. For the most part, I just think it's the kind of series. If you want epic sci-fi, but you like fantasy, this is for you because as much as there is a lot of sci-fi elements, you know, you have spaceships, you have the science behind the explanations for everything, it still feels like epic fantasy. So if you are looking for a combination of the two, this is a fantastic series to start with. It's really underhyped and underrated, so I would recommend checking it out. And then coming in at number one, I have a historical fiction, and that is the Matthew Shardlake series by C.J. Sampson. Matthew Shardlake series is a series of murder mystery historical fiction investigations. We are following Matthew Shardlake, who is a hunchbacked lawyer in Tudor, England, namely under the reign of Henry VIII. It starts at the execution of Anne Boleyn, so it is during the time of turbulence during Henry's reign when it comes to the religious politicking. This first book we are following Shardlake as he investigates someone who was murdered as an investigator of the dissolution of the monasteries. This is a series that each time discusses something about our society, about us as people. It has an incredibly diverse cast of characters. We have queer characters, we have black characters within a historical setting incorporated into one, an authentic way. Two, it has the initial prejudices that you would expect of a Tudor man while simultaneously then having that person check themselves and come to terms with the fact that being queer or being black makes you no less of a human. It also has some very very interesting female characters in here, political figures of power who are female, it has discussions around involvement of the church, involvement of politicians and the scheming that happens, the effect that has on society, all while having a very compelling murder mystery subplot going on throughout and I just this is the kind of historical fiction series I want to read. I want to read about real people. I don't want to only be reading about kings and queens. Now you do get some nobility mentioned because he is dealing with them but we are talking about just common folk or real people that were living during this time and the effect that the constant changes in things like religion or in who the queen is or who the king is, the effect that that has on the common folk, the, the large effects that it has or the almost non-existent effect that it has on common folk depending and I just think that it's done in such a way it's actually ruined historical fiction for me because now whenever I read historical fiction it's like well I could just be rereading this to be honest. Do without what you will but it's an absolutely incredible series and I would highly highly recommend if you're looking for a historical fiction. But that's all folks, those are my top 10 non-fantasy series. Stick around for part two which will be coming in my next upload. So I hope that you enjoyed and let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them or if I've convinced you to pick up any of these series. But that is all for me today so thank you ever so much for watching and I will catch you soon. Bye!